So I use abundant, safe, reusable and sustainable materials. And now, after a long period in stealth mode, a Massachusetts company has put their head above the parapet to announce to the world that they've developed a storage solution using one of the cheapest and most abundant elements on Earth, and which can discharge power, not for hours, but for days at a time. So will this be yet another one to add to the cynics list of somewhere over the rainbow technologies? Or could it turn out to be a realistic disruptor in the grid scale energy sector? Well, mm, well that sounds quite, uh, what's the word, promising doesn't it? it? Sounds quite promising, yeah. New iron air battery outperforms best lit in ion tech. Cheap, Cheap abundant London. and non-toxic. Mm. Well, sounds like it's, it's man's dream come true energy source. Absolutely. Well, yeah, he can mm. energy storage problems. Oh, right, yeah. No more yeah. energy storage, storage problems. problems yeah. yeah, he can literally store energy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All it sounds like all all of man's problems are all solved. Yeah, I've got to say big thanks to uh, Johnny M for that uh, that material. But so uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, what what what's the guys? What's the guys? Uh, Website channel? Oh, oh just, just have, have a, a think. think. Oh, right. Oh, oh right. Well, okay. that's not oh. very promising, isn't it? No, that's not very promising at all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. have a think. Just have a think. Oh, well, right. use your imagination. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Use your, just use your imagination. imagination. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, I think we'd best uh, go and uh, do a and bit of investigative work, work on and, this one. And annoy a few people. Yeah. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do. And you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again, annoying people with our views and opinions, because... Oh, because... Because, 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 because... because, because, because. A lot of people dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Ba -ba 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 yeah, that's so true. Yeah, a lot of people do yeah. dislike hearing, hearing other, other people's, people's views, views and, and opinions. opinions. Especially if you're a, a Brexiteer and you tell them that uh, we've got... Uh, the, the UK is going to see a lot more... Afghanistan uh, refugees Do, flooding the country. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands, apparently, flooding the country. Yeah. And so, but they won't be crossing the channel, so th they'll yeah. be airlifted by the military. So they'll be they'll mm. come in through. They, they won't come in through the back door, as it were. No, well, you don't know because a lot of Afghan refugees will slip through the nets. They will probably find their own way over to the UK. Well, a lot of a lot of Afghan refugees may have been crossing the. Channel anyway. Yeah, yeah, it no, could yeah, have been yeah. uh, uh, Afghan refugees that were they're crossing, all in um, who were crossing the channel anyway. They're all in Sanga, in Sanga in Calais, in France. Oh right, yeah, absolutely, of course. But uh, waiting you know, to come across. As somebody, as somebody said to me, you to know, the, to the promised lands. If you go into a country and you you mess around with it, really, you know, you've got to pay the price, haven't you? Yeah. You know, so yeah. you know, yeah. we've, it's only fair, it's only fair that Britain, the UK takes on. Uh, yeah. Um, X number of Afghan uh, refugees. Fugees, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's what you know. You mess around yeah. with other people's affairs. Yeah. And and the worst you know. thing, the worst thing is, is that you can't blame Tony Blair, because the whole UK Parliament voted to go oh, of course, to war yeah. in and, Afghanistan. And all the people who voted to go to war in Afghanistan were voted in by people, the voters. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, I mean, you know, you know, I don't vote. I don't, I've never voted in my life, so I can't be blamed for any of the or any of the rubbish that comes out of Parliament. You know, yeah, basically. Yeah. I can moan about it, of course. I've got every right to, but at least I, you know, I always think that if you've had your vote, you've had your say. You know, it's as yeah, simple, simple as, as that. Yeah. You know, you should be quiet. You should be shouldn't be moaning about be anything. Yeah, well, you should be accepting of what's going because on because you took part in the democratic process, process. of this country. Yeah. You took part. You've had your say. So shut the fuck up. People like me can moan as much as we, as much as we want. Yeah, can't we? Absolutely, and of course. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's a that's a political issue, and we don't really do politics on the channel, do we? No, 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 no definitely not. We tend to do uh, things that are more uh, commonsensical, really, don't we? Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, sure. More pra like pragmatic. Where's, where's the oxygen? Where's the oxygen? 
yeah where is the oxygen yeah we're going to be asking you later on um, all of our viewers out there where is the oxygen, oxygen. Oh, excuse me, of course. So come on then. So, uh, what have we got on for... Oh, how are you, Peter? Are you well? Are you well? Or are you well? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. And we both hope you are all well too. Or bar one or two of you, anyway. Absolutely, of course. But uh, So, what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for today? Well, for everyone's displeasure, what we're going to do is we're going to ask people, where's the oxygen? Where's the oxygen? Because we did a similar thing to a guy who we showcased a video... In our last video. Where he's burning sulphur. Basically, so we're going to do that. We're going to have a look at water and pH and CO2 dissolving in water to form carbonic acid. Absolutely. Cool, well, sir. or so people think. We're going to have a look at the dry air effects on health. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're going to uh, have a look at an iron air battery. An iron air battery, yeah. Thanks, the Johnny the guy... The guy, uh, use your imagination. Just use your imagination. imagination yeah. uh, introduce the idea of the, the idea of that anyway. Yeah, basically. So we're going to have sure. a look at that. We're gonna, and we're going to yeah. ask you what you think of it. We'll, we've got some great piece of information about our famous French chemist. Absolutely. Antoine Monsieur. Laurent Lavoisier. Lavoisier. Oh, 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 oh. oh Yes, we found a bit of... Uh, I, was watching a, I was watching a documentary and all of a sudden there was... There was some actors portrait or an actor portraying Lavoisier, yeah. and uh, I thought it would be quite nice just to uh, insert into the, the video and talk about the the, uh, the the clip. Absolutely, it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. interesting. And we're going to have a look at CO two detectors. Absolutely, because if you thought you could detect CO two in, the, in atmosphere, the atmosphere, in the air, got, in the air, you've got another thing coming. coming. Yeah, and I do apologise, we shouldn't really use the word atmosphere. I know atmosphere relates to the globe. It's just I've yet to come up, uh, come across a, a better word. Other than and atmos. Other than atmos. I don't really like atmos. I think the, environment. The, the environment. The environment is good. Yeah, OK, OK. Yeah, the, 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 the gaseous environment. Yeah. So that's why they probably called it the ether, because the ether relates to the atmosphere. Yeah. It's another word. That yeah. means atmosphere. Yeah, but we don't want to use the word ether. We don't. I don't want to use the word ether because nobody knows what what it is. So we'll just call it the environment we're we'll in. Just, we'll just call it anyway. Come on. The air. The air. The air. The air. Absolutely, of course. But uh, so, what, what should we do first? We just have a quickly. Well, let's quickly sh so I say to people again, time and time again, if you want to have a chat with uh, Pete and Pete about uh, anything we claim or any of our opinions on our channel. Like yep. There's no oxygen in the air. Water is oh, not made of hydrogen. hydrogen oxygen. Oxygen. Fish, fish breathe water, and not oxygen. There's no uh, poles. There's no poles on the globe Earth. Yeah, there's, there's no, no, no poles. Yeah, yeah north no and pole. south pole. Yeah, no magnetic poles. poles. Yeah, because you've only got attraction. In our understanding, there's Absolutely. only attraction. There's only attraction, not that, repulsion. That exists in nature because repulsion only exists in man's. World, man-made magnets. Absolutely, absolutely. Of course, or you know, if you think, if you think light is made up of RGB, or white if you think, light is made up of RGB. Yeah, or if you think sun's light is electromagnetic, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know, and we'll gladly have a let's, communication discussion with you, either on Zoom or yeah, Discord. Absolutely, and if you've got some proof to back up your claims, then we'd love to see it. Yeah, and then we'll take down any relevant video yeah. Yeah. if you if you show some proof. Okay, yeah. and, sh and that demonstrates that we're wrong. Absolutely. You know, I don't, I, I, I'm quite go. happy to change my views if I'm, somebody can show me some proof, proof proof that I am wrong with a capital P, with a capital P, proof. R, capital O, capital O, and capital F. Yeah. There we go. Absolutely. But uh, anyway, now we watched um, before we move on. We watched. Um, on our last video, we showcased this video. We showcased this video, which was this guy here drinking... Uh, K-Class Science Channel. Yeah, drinking some water. This guy here with the, uh, you know, with the Rubik's Drinking clip. some water. Drinking some water. And well, saying water, that he's probably got water from the tap. I, we, don't, I don't know. Yeah, we have water from a dehumidifier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but he may have water from a bottle, plastic bottle. He may have bought his. Possibly. Not but we tap. haven't bought but, ours. Anyway, uh, yeah, sure, we haven't bought ours at all because we don't buy water anymore. We just extract it from the air. Oh, we don't. Oh, yeah, we don't. We don't buy. We don't buy water. And we don't pay for water, really, do we? Well, we do because we have wastewater. Uh, only the only the water that we not drinking water. Though. Drinking water we don't buy. 
No, no, no. Or, or pay for. No. Drink anyway. the water. But uh, um, it says here now, if we leave a glass of water in the open air for a few days, the water will turn slightly acidic. Mm. Right, okay, sounds a good claim. A lot of people would say that, you know, mm. there's carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or in the air. Well, this happens. As a constituent, and the carbon dioxide saturates into the water to make it acidic. Yeah, well, this happens because the gaseous carbon dioxide in air dissolves in water to form carbonic acid, like yeah. carbon dioxide, which is an oxide of a non-metallic element, carbon. Yeah, absolutely, of course. But So what we did is we did exactly that. We, we actually had a, a glass jar filled with water, dehumidified water, water, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, we tested yeah. the pH. Now, this was... Um, this was um, early in the morning. Early in the morning, you can see the, the blue, early the blue in light. The morning. Really. Picked up by the camera. So we're just going to check the pH, and we we get a pH of around, of around. Ground. It's got to be of about six, six and a half, six point seven five. Probably something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. It's between six and a half and seven. Yeah, yeah. Isn't I'd, it? I'd go with that. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's quite mm. quite reasonable. Yeah, quite reasonable. So early in the morning, um, early morning rain. It, the water signified an 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 acidity, slight acidity, slight acidity. So that okay. would tie in with what the guy is saying. Well, yeah, because we've that that jar was left out for like overnight or yeah, even the day go. before, and this is the day after during the night time or during the evening. Time. Yeah, because one of the questions is, how does the carbon dioxide then, if it forms carbonic acid? How does it then leave the water? Well, it doesn't. It's supposed to not leave the water at all. The carbon dioxide once it's saturated so, in there. So this water here should be acidic. Yeah, it should remain the same. It, it should it? remain acidic. Yeah. So let's have a little uh, butchers here. See what's happening. Dip it's going down. We dip it in. And here we can notice a difference. Oh, look at that. The water that. is more neutral. Cool. Seven. So, so it seems to have risen in alkalinity. Hmm. Oh, During yeah. the day. That means that was there any carbonic acid in there, in the water? Well, I can't. I, we can't detect any carbonic acid there. Mm. We may have been able mm. to earlier on in that morning, the previous day, mm. but not, not now. We can't determine that at all. So... How, how? But that is a seven. That is definitely yeah, a seven. Yeah, that's the I'd agree with that. That's that, definitely a seven. Definitely a seven. So it's gone back. Or it's gone from a 6.5, 6.75 or whatever, to a seven. So what mm. we're finding essentially is that we did this for a while, uh, for over a few days. And we did find that early in the morning, uh, the water is more acidic. And in the evening time, it's more alkaline. It's more yeah. neutral. Yeah. So there is a fluctuation. Mm. So what could cause that then? What? Peaked? Oh, well, it could be temperature. It could, it could well be, be a, a lot of factors. I mean, an anomaly. It could be. It could be. Uh, but some people would say, but it, that or oh, that's the f plants photosynthesizing, oh, right. and the amount of CO two in the air is but, reduced. But, but how would the CO two, if it, if it's dissolved in the water, how can it then leave the water? Oh right, yeah, of course, it doesn't make sense, of course. Um, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, answers on a postcard, postcard. please. Mm. I mean, if you if you really do think that uh, the CO two is there, you know, please tell us why that uh, yeah. water was yeah. neutral during the evening time. See now, if you were if, if that if you were that guy at the, the, in the video who was drinking his water, yeah, and he just did the morning sample. Oh, absolutely, of he course. You could say, there you go. Look, it's acidic. The water is acidic. Yeah. Like, like he said, he states here, you know, yeah. if we leave a glass of water in the open air for a few days, yeah. the water will turn it slightly. The water will turn slightly acidic. So he just does it in the morning. There you go. Look, it's slightly acidic. I mean, that's actually, but that's because of the carbon dioxide is dissolved in the water to form carbonic acid. But if he did it later on in the evening, it would have a different result. Absolutely. So you know, I mean, but 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 we have the main question. And that is, how do we know that there's carbon dioxide yeah, in the air? Absolutely, of course, because uh, the guy here, he's saying that there's carbon dioxide in, in the, the air, air and it mm. saturates into the water, into the glass jar. 
of water. Yeah. So how we, but how do we know that? How do we know that there's carbon dioxide in the air? Well, some people would say, well, why don't you buy yourself a CO2 detector? Oh, absolutely. Well, how stupid are we? Oh, you know, why don't you just buy a CO2 oh, detector? It's, got, it's so easy. That well, will tell you there's CO2 well, in the some, air. some people say, well, if you were that clever, you could even make one yourself. Oh, right. Well, like this guy, this guy here, yes. for example. An easy Arduino-based carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide meter. meter. What more do you want? You know, absolutely, of course. Now, um, so it's... Look, 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 there's even a display there, look. CO2 level, 413 parts per million. There you go. go. Let's just play a little bit of this. Let, now, we'll play a little, little bit of this. There we go. We've got... Look. He's got... Uh, he's got... There's his circuit board. Uh, he's got a detector there. He's got the detector yeah. there. He's got CO2 it. level, 444 four, four parts per million, 435 parts per million. There you go. What, what, what more do you want? And and is, a isn't this proof in itself yeah. that there's CO2 a globe. in the air? A globe would say, there you go. There's proof there. So you have that by your water and you can detect that there's CO2 in the air that's being Absolutely. dissolved into the water to turn the litmus paper acidic. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. The, the pH paper, yeah, of course. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it looks really good, doesn't it? You yeah. know, I mean, but how, how can anyone argue that? Yeah, but this is how science works. It, devises, it creates devices to support an understanding. Absolutely. In this video, we use the MQ-135 gas sensor to measure the concentration of carbon dioxide in, in the, the air. air. Wow. And he got a reading of 413 parts, parts per million. million. Mm. That's not bad, is it? But, eh? but like any of these videos, you have to read the comments. You've got to read the comments. Mm. Here we go. What's his name? There we go. Look, we Being found it already. Clear. Here we go. We found it now, already. This Here is a great, great comment. Here we go. I like the video. There are, however, assumptions implied which are not realistic to expect. For example, while going outside to the backyard, one can reasonably assume, if located far from mixed citified air, that the MQ-135, which is the detector sensor. sensor, detection reading is indeed mostly CO2. This sensor detects an assorted group of gases. In the backyard environment, one can reasonably assume that benzene or ammonia, for example, are not present, nor are others to which the 135 reacts. Mm. So what, is, what the guy is saying is that the 135, MQ-135 sensor reacts to other gases other, gases other than CO2. CO2. Absolutely, of course. So um, and it, he goes on here. Um, yeah, you don't need any of that, do you? Um, yeah, thus the, re thus the reading reflects yeah. CO2 concentrations versus, say, ammonia, for example. However, upon changing the environment, um, all, all bets, bets are off. off. Yeah. Yes, CO2 is also in the mix, but the sensor can't discern the relative contribution of each compound it detects. Or spraying certain aerosols or using cleaning liquids in the home. Yeah. Will also contribute significantly to the sensor's reading. How, How much CO2? CO2? Yeah, it's impossible. Well, yes, impossible to, to tell. tell. The sensor simply tells you that something is detectable. Cool. Yeah. In fact, and that's being detected. detected. But he can't tell you what. He can't. The, the sensor can't tell you what it is. So when when you do look at his readout, when it says when it says CO two level, level, how do you know that CO two? Oh. I don't know whether that's a, there's a close up. Yeah, yeah. No. When you see the the readout there, CO two level four hundred and seventeen parts per million. How how did you know that's true? How do you know it's CO two? How do you know it's accurate? How do you know it's CO two? It could be other gases along with a little bit of CO two. Or no, not, CO2. or no CO2. It could be other things. Yeah. You know, because the M, the MQ-135 isn't sensitive enough just to detect one gas, gas, which is CO2. Sorry. Can't do it. So that's a big, big fail um, to do with on, that. And this is mainstream science. Yeah, this yeah. is mainstream science. And the, the M, MQ-135 is probably the sensor that's in a lot of... Uh, carbon dark, dark dioxide dark detectors. detectors. Yeah. But anyway, let's carry on. You know, the important ones. thing for people to realise is that with the M MQ-135 and with all the MQ series, the output of the sensor only verifies that at least one or more of the gases it detects is present at the moment. moment. It does not reveal any useful quantitative information when two or more gases are contributing to its output. 
it simply displays one reading combining all the totals. In fact, manufacturer's data states that the sensor output cannot be used to tell you which one or more are actually present, and most certainly not a ppm breakdown of one gas, as implied in the video regarding CO2. As in, absolutely, of course. So the guy shouldn't be doing that. CO2, parts per million, four, three, one. Yeah. Shouldn't be doing it. Because yeah. the sensor isn't that um, sensitive enough just to detect isolate and one. detect one particular gas. Can't do it. Hmm. And it's exactly the same with the carbon monoxide detector that... Um, uh, yeah. Who gave us carbon monoxide... Detector. Oh, uh, Gary. Gary, yeah. Gary gave us a carbon monoxide detector and it could detect hydrogen. hydrogen. But the only bit, but we think it could detect hydrogen simply because there's hydrogen in carbon, carbon monoxide. monoxide. Yeah, and the carbon monoxide uh, detector is a hydrogen detector. Absolutely, of course. But uh, but 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 it's a, and you'll find that a lot of people do use different. They use a wide variety of devices to measure CO two or hydrogen. All this. They don't yes. just use one detector. Mm. However, that detector uh -huh. is useful if you actually put out CO two into an environment. Yeah. So then you can use your detector because you know that there's CO two in that environment. Yeah. I supp yeah. I suppose if you well. Well, I suppose if you had, yeah, but you, yeah, but you can. Uh, if you filled up an environment with with CO two gas, and then you calibrated it at one hundred percent CO two, and then you took it away, then it's it's likely that you it would detect CO two, but you could still be detecting another gas other than CO two. Yeah, because that's because you don't know. This is one thing with man's devices, and that is you can't get like with the CO two detector, you can't calibrate it in an environment filled with 100% CO2, calibrate it, and then take that device outside and it will detect... Into another environment. It will detect, say, 10% CO2, or it will detect 0.15% CO2. Well, yeah, it could detect it, because but it, it can't determine whether there's those values of... those levels of CO2 in that environment, in the new yeah, environment. No, yeah, yeah. Can't do it. Either. It's not reliable. Mm. They're not reliable at all. So that's one flaw with man's devices. Uh, absolutely, of course. Yeah, I mean, if you think if you think we're wrong, and you think that, and this guy's wrong as well, and there's you th you think there aren't limitations to CO two detectors, or even oxygen sensors, or whatever sensor you you're going to use. Uh, mm. Let us know. Leave a comment below okay. and tell us why, and yeah. show us some proof that shows that shows that you Come on, are correct. Okay, but anyway, so that's that so one. I'm not bye. going to. Uh, what next, then, please? Oh, bye. We can click yeah, off. Yeah, what, what, what should we do? So I don't, I don't want to click it off in case. Uh, so we've done CO2 detector. Let's go on Lavoisier. Did we do all of our little demonstrations? Did we not have one more? Well, that's the, the oh. burning sulphur, isn't it? Oh, right, yeah. Right. So where, where know, should we go where's now? Where's the oxygen? That's what oh, that right. is. Okay, then. So what should we do now? Then? Let's go on Lavoisier. Oh, Bonjour, Monsieur, Monsieur Lavoisier. Lavoisier. Now, there's a, there's a documentary on on, uh, <coughs> on YouTube called Einstein's Big Idea. And in it, he goes back in time, before Einstein, to, to look at... Um, the Enlightenment period. Cer yeah, certain um, advancements in scientific in the scientific world developments in like michael faraday with uh, electricity electromagnetism oh, right, so right. and uh because michael faraday just come up with the idea that well we're using magnets and we're using electricity well there's an electromagnetism kind of force oh right, yeah yes. well that's such a new way to think about it mm. mike it's well, a bit like saying if you will make your head of the uh Head of the Royal Society for yeah. that. It's, it's no different to um, using water to produce, to drive a turbine, to produce electricity. And you could call it hydroelectric. Yeah, hydroelectric. Yeah, there's no difference, you know. it's All, all it does is just change people's... Uh, linguist, it's a linguistical kind of yeah. thing, isn't it? And one thing with man's world of uh, illusion... And that is, he loves to bring in new concepts. New concepts, because new concepts, new words, new ideas, well, same ideas, but new words, mean that it gives people the impression of 
development. Things are changing. Things are changing. Things are moving. Even though we're moving into the future. Even though they're still using rubber for car tyres. Absolutely, of course. Yes. For over a hundred years. And I'm sure they've been using lots of other things that for for lots of stuff. Coal. They're still using coal, you know, for fuel, you know. Still manufacturing. Still manufacturing, you know, even that hasn't changed much over the years at all. Even since the early blast furnaces, you yeah. know. Anyway, you come know. on. But anyway, but, uh, and so one of them was Michael Faraday, and the next one was actually Lavoisier. Mm. His advancements with the theory, the oxygen theory, only the idea to get people to change the way they think about the natural world. Come on. So, uh, so we'll we'll just play this. Hopefully, it's not copywritten, and we won't get uh, we won't get uh, what's the word? Um, it blocked. It blocked or anything. Um, I think it should be all right. Well, you could actually just. Should uh, I speed it up? Well, you could actually just play it or uh, mute it. Mute we, it. We just talk over. It, oh, we could just talk over. Or it. do okay. you need to play the audio? Well, we could put the subtitles. We could we could put the subtitles, closed captions on. Um, we'll just we'll just do that. Oh, that's, that's what we'll do. Right, um, um, we can talk over it. Okay. So in this little clip, we've got um, Lavoisier's wife. Okay, bringing bringing in uh, a group of scientists in in the French uh, community, scientific community, to have a look at Lavoisier's mm. new demonstration. Mm. Okay. Drum roll. He's got a drum roll, and he's he's hoping and praying to. So so here he is now. So, it's my great ambition to, to demonstrate, demonstrate, but nature, nature is a closed system. system that in any transformation, no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost, and none is gained. Over here, please. Come Over on. here. Come on. Over here. Here, here we show go. You. So, what, he, what he's going to do, he's going to show uh, um, people... In this glass uh, vase, he's got a water, certain amount of water, which and the water is being going to be heated. It's going to pass through the the uh, pipe, through the coals, the hot coals, yeah. and then he's going to collect the gas at the other end. He's going mm -hmm. to condense the water, condense it all through the coil there, and uh, out the other end, he's going to. Um, yeah, he collects a certain amount of water, but he recognises that the amount of water he collects is less than what was passed through the... Sure. And what he's saying is that the, the, the loss of weight in the water is equal to the amount of uh, hydrogen, the weight of the hydrogen, and also the weight of the iron. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, basically what, what, what what's happening is that uh, the inside of the uh, rifle barrel gains weight. Mm. Okay, water um, is um, condensed yeah. on the other end, and he's collected hydrogen as well. And the hydrogen is flammable. And this this is this is the drawing. Water you know, is made of out of hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. And oxygen. Um, Absolutely, of course. Is to get the oxygen to stick inside the red hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making yes. rust, uh, and his uh, oxygen iron. But he was, yeah, he was just making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. Yes. So that that you can understand why people are thinking. Well, there you go. You know, there's no weight loss in anywhere. Ah, but so the the hydrogen has to come from the water. Well, and the oxygen's been absorbed into the reacted with the iron uh, pipe, hmm. so it, the, the gas has got to come from the water. From the water, we can understand why people think that way. Hmm. However, a lot of people should have actually thought to themselves, but why couldn't the hydrogen have come from the breakdown of the iron, uh, the breakdown of the rifle uh, cylinder? You know. The, why the barrel, the hydrogen come yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Why could not the hydrogen have come from the rifle barrel? Hmm. But one thing we've got to consider in there is there's clearly uh, a loss of water from when he started to what he collected at the very. What end. he collected at the end, there was a loss of water. So there's a loss of water. That's why he th he says the hydrogen comes from the water. However, one of the things we have to think about, and that is the water would have it would have been steam. Would have been steam. 
which would have heat gone through the iron pipe which would have turned into a superheated steam because of yeah. the temperature yeah yeah and then that would have carried on through along with some of the hydrogen that would have taken carried because it would have been water yeah, gas sure but some of the water would have absorbed into the iron barrel yeah yeah so you've got water going in being a constituent say of the hydrogen yeah water gas being a constituent of the hydrogen you've also got water that would have been absorbed into the iron pipe into the yeah into the rifle barrel one of the things also to think about and that is he will say Lavoisier would say that the iron pipe gains in weight just like when you heat up steel wall or whatever it gains in weight right, yeah but my argument with all this because Lavoisier says nothing he's got a closed system nothing is lost nothing is gained so you've got to be able to account for everything but one thing that Lavoisier fails to take into account when during his demonstration is the precise weight of the iron and the carbon that was used to make the iron pipe because I'm it's a possibility that the weight of the iron and the the iron oxide the iron ore, the, the, iron sorry, ore. the iron ore and the carbon weighed more than the iron pipe combined yeah I mean really he should he should have yeah he should have yeah he should have gotten all of the weights of the materials to actually that were used to make the iron barrel yeah and because if the iron pipe decomposed which it would do because of the water passing the steam passing through it if it decomposed into its constituents being the uh, iron ore and the carbon they would weigh more than oh, they, what they were as yeah. the metal yeah they th yeah so that would like accounting. for the gaining weight not because the iron absorbed any oxygen yeah but it's likely the iron could have the iron could have absorbed water absolutely it could have you know but he, he he's not he's not demonstrating essentially where you know he's not really being scientific and saying that you know it's splitting the water mm. the, the options come from the water and another point to bear in mind with this demonstration and that is he doesn't show you the oxygen he, he absolutely no but he can't show you any oxygen, oxygen that's in the that's reacted with the iron no. yeah can't show you it can't show you it. can't extract it so you know i mean yeah. that's no good he can show but, you the hydrogen he can put a light up to it and pull. yeah sure but it's i mean it's quite good but uh, i mean it's quite interesting but he also the, um, just moving on i mean it, it talks about like lavoisier's life and the the french revolution mm -hmm. and he was he was going to be like uh attacked or uh, well, by, he was a tax man wasn't he because he was a tax man tax he was going to get hassle from lots of people but in this little bit here of the video you can see that he's trying to um use hydrogen and oxygen to make water or that's the um impression they want to give people mm. so she's creating the spark and in the glass vase here you know he's got uh water which has mm. been made allegedly from the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen that's what the the, the documentary wants to give people the illusion mm. that's happening but uh, as far as i'm concerned it never happened like that at all yeah well nobody's nobody's ever done that nobody's ever done nobody's Nobody. ever done that at all you know no. i mean i'm still waiting to see somebody do a video where they're actually turning um they're actually burning hydrogen and oxygen in a closed system okay where there is no water present at all or and, and the hydrogen's dry and the hydrogen's dry, dry. but both all gases are dry and basically they they burn the gases within a uh, a closed system a vacuumed system and water is produced i've not yeah. seen that at all ever no never seen it i've not there's no you go and search on youtube you won't find it no you won't find it i mean it'd be great if now wouldn't it be great if nile red and cody's lab could do that eh oh right oh, now yeah, i think they be, should mm, i think yes, they, they should mm. get working yeah they, mm. they really do need to get working because oh, what was his name uh, the science nerd rage well nerd rage you got nerd rage what about the the guy from argentina oh uh, chemistry oh, science chemistry science chemistry yeah. science mm. yeah absolutely i mean if anyone's out there you know that that would be the classic experiment that needs yeah. to be done on youtube
But you've got to prove that there's no water in the hydrogen. All, all the oxygen, absolutely, of course. That's a hard thing to do. to do. How would you prove there's no water, gaseous water, water. present in your setup? Knowing, knowing full well that you'll always need water to break the material down to release the hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. There, there, it says here on the subtitles, the remarkable use of static electricity, electricity yeah, to cause oxygen and hydrogen to recombine back into water. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's rubbish. Oh, Antoine, you're so, so clever. Uh, Antoine, Antoine, you are so, so, so clever. clever. Yeah. You know, it's absolute rubbish because, yeah. you know, I, it's, it's just like a claim that lots of people come out with, but those, there's nothing to back it up. Yeah. Nothing to back anyway, it up. Anyway, come on, so we've done that. But, uh, I mean, it's oh, in, uh, interesting just to have a little... Uh, Nosy. Uh, nosy on that. I think it's quite, uh, quite good because it uh, gives you a, a good idea on what all these oh, people now. were doing. Water and pH. Avozier and Faraday and Can all that. Iron Air battery. Come on, let's now, go and visit that. The Iron Air battery. Now, we watched this guy at the beginning, didn't we? Mm. Uh, just have a think. Just, no, just use your imagination. Just, just have what, a dream. Just have a dream, dream. of course. Mm. Any dream will do. That's what he oh, could right, yeah. He should wear channel. a Technicolor dream coat. Yeah, he should do. He mm. should star in Joseph and the amazing technical dream, dream coat. Absolutely, of course. But um, yeah, um, new iron iron air battery outperforms oh, best lithium ion tech. Cheap, abundant, non toxic, and carbon free. free. There you go. I mean, what what could anyone want? You know, so the technology was first developed by NASA. Yeah, there oh, you go. In the seventies, but no major commercial application has ever come to fruition. fruition. Well, I wonder why. Well, now though, a US company backed by some pretty big investors like NASA, like NASA, has developed a grid scale iron air battery that could be a real industry disruptor. disruptor. Mm. Wow. Now, so it, it talks about, let's have a little uh, mosey through this. Uh, we just want the. Um, just want the diagram here. Yeah, uh, here we go. Is it there? Yeah, this is yeah, it. This is it. We've got. Uh, so you've got. Uh, you've got the. Oh, you've got the anode here, which is iron. It's an oh. iron anode, and the cathode's linked up to a. Um, it's, it's like an oxygen kind of absorbent, atmospheric air absorbent material. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. And then you've got an electrolyte solution in between. Oh. I think this is the right one. Yeah. So you've got your electrolytic solution in between. Yeah. There, there you go. go. And it's exciting, isn't it? Mm. The the air in. goes. Mm -hmm hits the cathode and you get these OH now it's all done in molecules and stuff isn't it of course yeah. to help people understand the bullshit confuse people to, 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 yeah, absolutely of course but the oxygen goes across okay or, or basically yeah sorry it goes through and hits the iron metal well, anode it reacts with the hydrogen reacts with the hydrogen because you've got OH oh sure yeah but I'm not interested oh, right. the interesting part is that the the iron anode, decomp you have anodic decomposition, which forms rust. Mm, iron oxide. Iron oxide. So you'll get iron oxide floating around in the electrolytic solution. Mm. A bit like your lead oxide in a lead acid battery. Oh, so it's very much the same. Right. And then basically what happens is when the, when the, pulp, the electricity flow is altered, changed, yeah, reversed. You can see it's rusting there. You can see it's rust is building up on on the right hand side, left and, hand side. No, on the right hand yeah, side sorry. of the anode. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, of course. But then, then what what happens is that they change the polarity, and then what happens is that oh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, the rust basically turns into uh, metal again. Metal again. Oh. So you've basically mm. built up your you've basically built up your 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 electrode anode again. Electrode again. Your yeah. anode again. Wow. Because well, that's great, the cathode. Because what what he's failing to show to, yeah, the the F E side is your cathode. Yeah, when it charges up. When yeah. it charges up, it yeah. becomes your cathode. And then you'll get all of your iron metal, all of these iron bits going towards the wow. iron cathode sounds brilliant doesn't to it? make the to make the new anode wow when the battery is then discharged wow brilliant, right isn't it? i mean it, it sounds good it sounds absolutely good but we think this is total total rubbish rubbish absolute rubbish sorry for the simple reason being why 
Well, I think some people may have got it, and that is for iron to reconstitute itself as a metal, it needs a reducing agent. Absolutely, of course, yeah. In order for you to have iron metal, you need a reducing, reducing agent. agent. Mm. And there isn't the reducing agent there in that system. Ah, but some people might say, but you and me both consider that the reducing agent is hydrogen. Sure. And they're saying that hydrogen is in the water. Uh, but so like, the hydrogen could, let's say, fuse right, okay. with the right, iron. Okay. Right, okay. Sure, okay. But uh, no, right. I don't think so. When you think about how iron is made and manufactured, blast furnace, high, high levels of heat, heat, you need your reducing agent, which is coke. and Carbon. Uh, uh, carbon, plus also you need your, your calcium, your limestone, plus other materials, mm. as, as well as your iron ore. Yep. So if you've just got your iron ore rust, iron oxide, where's the other materials that are needed to make your metal? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Do you understand where, where we're coming from? Yep. Yeah. You know, so something like this in practice just simply won't work. Won't work. It just won't yep. work, in this, our opinion. This is why it's just have a think and he can't demonstrate it. Absolutely, of course. So if we go... Um, you just can't demonstrate it. There we, we go. go uh, and again, like before... It's always good to have a look at the comments. Absolutely, of course. Hopefully, we get the, we get the right ones. Yeah. Here. here we go. We left one. We left one here. It says, "Oh, oh dear." Well, sorry about Over. that. I got the wrong one. Yeah, just scroll down. Yeah, I do apologise. That was me. I clicked on our here uh, here. absolute rubbish, in my opinion. No way can the anode be reconstituted to form iron metal using the method outlined in the iron air battery during charging. Okay. If the tech was true, then somebody would would at least be able to show you a lump of metallic iron formed through this process. Because yeah, it's, it's no different to electro winning. No different to electro winning. winning. Absolutely, of course. It's all, it's all the similar kind of uh, process. Absolutely, of course. But I've never seen iron metal being produced in this way by electrolysis. No. Not, not yeah. done it. Well, let's have a look at the comment below that. Um, I'm, absolutely, of course. I'm, I'm rarely impressed with proposed battery tech, but this seems promising. Promising. I'm curious if there is a catch. I'm wondering what the Coulombic efficiency is and C rate. If either one is low, that would give good reason why it's being used for stationary use, only despite having an incredibly high specific energy. At 700 plus watts per hour per kilogram, you could easily build an electric plane, but that doesn't seem to be their goal at all. I have so many questions now. I will be emailing them soon. I want to get my hands on one. Yeah. Oh, right. No, he's he's going yeah. he's going into it there. Right? The uh, one below yeah. that. I've seen promising startups like this for years. They all seem to have the same website with just the contents changing. Photos of people with great job titles and smiles. A smile that smiles well, a smile that splits their face in two halves, then a media page on one side and their business address. A storage, storage area, area or similar. similar. Yeah, a, park. a parking lot in this case. Until now companies like that have only deliv delivered promises. Check, for example, the energy catalyzer, the ECAT, by a guy named Rossi. One of the biggest scams, if not the biggest of all. I hope I'm wrong, but I'd rather wait before talking about a game changer. Absolutely, of course, yes. When you really do, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. When you, when you think about it l logically, what he's doing is that he's creating dreams for people. Yeah, I know, you yeah. Know, there's, even, there's, the, even that one. Nor, the dream is installing a unit in every home. Yeah, I know, You yeah. know, charging and discharging the, the grid, grid as needed. needed. But it's absolute rubbish. It can't, it, yeah, iron know, can't, yeah. you can't do it. Yeah, well, it's like this comment there. Absolutely mind-blowing technology, yet seemingly simple in theory. So let's see somebody demonstrate it. Absolutely, of course. Let's see somebody demonstrate it. If you know anyone out there who who's can make iron metal through basically an electro winning kind of process by using having iron ore floating around in an electrolytic yeah, yeah. solution and you're using an iron cathode yeah. okay then then I'd love to, I'd love to see I'd love to see it I'll tell yeah. you because I think this I think this whole whole technology is just uh, just load of rubbish, load of rubbish. total total they rubbish. might as well promote a, a new kind of tire that uh, a material for tires they might as well promote it, might they? Oh yeah, it's, it's no different so. to to the, the 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 claim that you read in the paper. And you say scientists have, have are testing new food uh, edible food wrappers, food oh, right, edible okay. food wrappers. Blah blah blah. Do you actually see them on the shelves? 
No, because a lot of people wouldn't want other people touching their hands. Touching their hands, yeah. And then eat that oh, right, wrapper, yeah, knowing sun- that other people have yeah, touched pick, it. Yeah, pick something up and thinking, no, I don't really want that. Put it down. Yeah, no, yeah. And they just pick their nose and, yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah. no, I don't want that. The practice, or scratch their backside. It's like these flying cars as well. The pra- the pra- people don't think of... People don't think of practicalities. Yeah. yeah, I know, yeah, people are... Would you want someone outside your house in a flying car looking through your window? Absolutely, yeah, just hovering there, you know, just, yeah, no, just yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous thinking no, no, about, no. you know. I'm well, surprised you haven't heard of a new story about people using their drones. Yeah, I know, yeah, probably. Yeah. Doing all that stuff. But anyway, so, no. I mean, it's, it's just venture into... Dream world. Dream world. Just, just have, have a dream. Thing. Just have a dream. Yeah. Uh, we should have. Ju- we should leave a comment on that, shouldn't we? Yeah. Just have a dream. dream. Yeah. All right. Just oh, here we go. Yeah. Let's leave yeah. another comment. Just have a dream. Yeah. Just have a dream. Yeah. D R E. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've got to. Uh, I've got to do that. Yeah. Just yeah, have just, a dream. Just have a dream. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Just, just have, have a dream. dream. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it's See all you about. Later. See you later. There we go. That so one. we've got that one. And what's our next one? Eight forty seven. Yeah, we've got to do it. That's we on our last bit, aren't we? Well I think we should just we should Cut leave dry off. air effects yeah, on okay. health. We should just revisit burning sulfur. Burning sulfur, so here we and go. And then we should where's, be, the, where's the oxygen? Yeah, of course. Where's the oxygen? Yeah, because um, now one thing we did show we showcased this video last time and uh, where they were burning the sulfur here and uh we we're, we're basically now it was about here where the bloke says that the sulphur reacts with the oxygen so in the combines, air. Combines, combines. Oh, combines. Let's have a little listen to this. Okay, are we listening? The test tube. The sulphur on heating will combine with the oxygen in the air to form an oxide called sulphur dioxide. Okay, now, um, so he's making a statement there, right, the sulphur will... Uh, react with the oxygen in the air, or combine with the oxygen in the air to form sulfur dioxide. Yeah. Right, okay, but uh, what oxygen in the air? Yeah, yeah. Can you see any oxygen in, uh, the, you know, in the, the air that he's? We we know he's using sulfur because you know we can see it in the in the little tray there. You know, it's the, it's the, the yellow. Bowl, it's, it's, it's the yellow stuff, powder, isn't it? Yeah, it's yellow powder. We know yeah. he's using sulfur. sulfur. There you go. He's popping some. And we know he's uh, using, he's, he's got a full of sulphur into the test tube. There he's got go. an oil lamp as well, so it's producing heat. There's a flame there, it's There's producing flame. heat. Heat, okay. But where's the oxygen? Where's what, the oxygen? What, what proof do we have there is oxygen, oxygen there, there, or present? We know air is present, of mm-hmm. course, we yeah. know that. We don't need to uh, worry about that. But And we yeah. know there's moisture in the air. And we know moisture in the air, but there's no proof there's oxygen there. No. At mm. all. It's so, very similar to that carbon dioxide. When he says there's carbon dioxide in the air that gets dissolved in the water. I know, yeah, but sure. There's no proof there's carbon there's dioxide no proof. in the air. So uh, we actually did it ourselves, this, uh, this little... Uh, as you do. This little, uh, this little demo, as you do, of course. So we, we've got our... Yeah. Flowers of sulphur. Got our flowers of sulphur. So there's no, our test tube. Flowers. I wonder why I call it flowers of sulphur. Because if you look, maybe if you look at look at them through a microscope, they look like flowers. Maybe they look like tulips. Oh, possibly, yeah. Or yeah, something. Possibly. So we put in uh, we pop in the sulphur into the test tube. There we go. Right there. Oh, we're just moving this along, really. So we've got the torch just to help illuminate things. We've got some water. We've got the blue litmus paper as well. You know, yeah. so we can kind of like do what the bloke did. Yeah. Now, the only thing we do different is that we apply more heat. Yeah, we, we apply quite, well, a, a substantial amount of heat. Mm. You can, so, as you can see, that the, the uh, sulphur's going yellow there. Well, it's going bright yellow. It's going bright, fl- mm. kind of fluorescent yellow, isn't mm. it, really? And uh, then it's going orange. You can see it's starting to go yeah. orange, deep red. Oh, and there we've got the fumes coming out the top. Fumes. Now, that would be sulphur dioxide, I would think. But, what is, but that, is that a gas or is that an ev- ev- evaporator? That's, a, that, that's an, a, um, a vapor. vapor. It's a vapor. It's not a mm. gas as such. It's a vapor. Mm. So, and normally, you know, if you bubble that through water, you'd get sulfurous acid, I believe. I understand. I believe you're correct, yeah. If you added more oxygen, you'd get sulfuric acid. You get uh, absolutely of course. So we can see that that's uh, yeah that's turning liquidy there. 
Mm, that is uh, it's looking quite uh, gooey. Quite gooey, yeah, of course. We, so we could have poured that out into a glass some of water, water. Mm. and made some, uh, what do they call it, plastic sulphur. Plastic sulphur, yeah. Oh, so we've got they, the... they used the plastic sulphur to make plastics. Plastics, absolutely, of course. So there we go. We, so it's turning pink. So a lot of people say, well, there you go. It's that, acidic. It's acidic, of course. So... But the, the main question is, is the sulphur combining with the oxygen? oxygen. Absolutely. Where yes. is the oxygen? Where is the oxygen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've not demonstrated any oxygen present here in this video at all. And I don't know how anyone can demonstrate the presence of oxygen in this yeah. video. All, all we're seeing... Or in this demo yeah. setup. In my understanding, all we're seeing in this demonstration is the thermal decomposition of sulphur absolutely yeah sure that's all we're seeing yeah. and it's interesting how the sulphur is changing state it was a solid even yeah. though it's powder form it was a yeah. solid and it turns to a liquid then it turns to a vapor yeah if we'd have we uh, see, it evap you yeah. still see the vapor coming out of the test if we'd have moderated the heat we could have had a continual flow of vapor until the liquid had all gone yeah we could have done that Possibly. yeah but uh, what what we're saying essentially is that you know we see that uh, the the sulphur is absorbing the heat and it's basically changing state, but we don't see it reacting with any oxygen combining. or combining with any, with any oxygen. oxygen. We don't see that. Yeah. So that it could well be that the sulphur doesn't combine with any oxygen at, at all, because yeah. I don't think it does, yeah. because there's no oxygen yeah. present. Present. Yeah. There's air present. We've, we've, got, we've got to say there's air present because I don't think anyone would disagree that air is present. Mm. You know, because another thing also, and that is, if people, are, if mainstream is saying that it, the, the sulphur combines with the oxygen to form sulphur, an oxide of sulphur, which is sulphur dioxide, then how can one extract the oxygen from sulphur dioxide? Absolutely, yeah, Just sure. Just exactly the same as carbon dioxide. How can one extract the oxygen from carbon dioxide? Oh, because you've got to process it even more in order to produce your sulfuric acid, and then your sulfuric acid would have to react with something else in order to produce oxygen. Yeah. The only thing is, is that the only thing we can say, and that is because you can't extract the oxygen from sulphur dioxide or oxygen from carbon dioxide, there is no oxygen there. Yeah, well, you know, you can't, we can't, we, we've got to conclude there is no, uh, there's no oxygen present at all. Yeah, but what do you think? Well, yeah, absolutely, what do you think? Leave us a comment below no. and, you know, if you think there is oxygen somewhere, in 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 there in that demonstration we'd love to see we'd love you to show us where yeah, it is yeah, you know yeah. and actually show us some proof that oxygen is there yeah. because we can get out our ox uh, our air concentrator and we can produce some oxygen and we can demonstrate that it is there mm. but yeah. there's no oxygen here because no. we haven't processed the air yeah we haven't Have concentrated the air. We haven't concentrated it to, to make yeah. oxygen. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure everyone understands yeah, that. Yeah, come on, thumbnail. We've, I think we've done it. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty all right, isn't it? So they they have it. Yeah. So you know. But let Back us know your track. thoughts. Back on track. Let us know your thoughts. You know, leave a comment below if you want to, and you know, if you've got some proof that there is oxygen in that demonstration. Yeah, love to or see. Or if you've got some proof that. Um, you know, that water's H2O, H2O and all this kind of malarkey. Yeah, Fish yeah. breathe oxygen yeah. as well. You know, yeah. then, you know, let's see some proof, you know, please. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll be starting to think that we're living in psychotic times. Oh, right, yeah. Well, we're living in man's dream world. We're living his in world man's, of illusion. Where, man's dream world, his where, world of illusion. Not only, not only it's does he, fabricated world. Yeah, not only does he, he ask people to just have a think, but... Um, he just gets people to just fill their heads up with rubbish. Absolutely, of course. Just have a dream. Just have a dream. Absolutely, because oh. that's all you need in man's society. You just got to have yeah. a dream. Yeah, just like all those Afghan refugees. Well, they've got to dream about coming to the UK. Okay, yeah, meeting that, the Queen, maybe. Because that gives them hope. Because that gives them hope. Absolutely, of course, and it gives them the will to carry on. 
Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, of course. So th- there, there, there you have it. We've we've done it, done and dusted already. Yep. So um, I hope everyone's uh, so everyone what, enjoyed what that. I reckon, what I reckon they should do, they should actually um, start. Um, they should start um, kids in schools. Um, start teaching them uh, the Afghan language. Oh well, yeah, they could do. Yeah, they could yeah. start teaching kids Afghan, Afghan. Afghanistani. Oh, uh, or whatever, whatever the language whatever, is, whatever language yeah, they use. Great idea, isn't it? Arabic. Yeah. Oh, it could be. Yeah. It could be Arabic. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. But uh, they, they could actually get them dressing like Afghans as well. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I bet the uh, the sales of Afghan hounds will will rise. Oh right, that's it's possible. Mm. But uh, mm. there you go. Yeah, of course. Anyway, yes. So there you have it. So thanks ever so much, and always remember till next time. If something doesn't make sense, like oxygen being in the air. Constituent of the air. Being a constituent of the air, absolutely, of course. Or or thinking that water is made of hydrogen Hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Thinking that nitrogen is a constituent of the air. Thinking that uh, the sun's light is electromagnetic. Thinking that white light is made up of red, blue and green. Absolutely. Thinking that chlorine's cobran. Oh, yeah. Thinking Thinking the carbon cycle is actually real. Thinking the nitrogen cycle is real. Absolutely, thinking that if you think that plants photosynthesize in a natural environment. Oh, right, yeah. If you think CO2, a glass left out on your windowsill will just become acidic and turn into carbonic acid. Mm. If you think bananas are naturally radioactive. Absolutely, of course, yes. If you thought that, um, yeah, if you thought that uh, your nuclear power plant doesn't actually use electricity. electricity. To fire up that nuclear neutron. reactor. No, that neutron howitzer. That neutron howitzer. But then bombard the <laughs> fuel rods <laughs> to generate the heat. Absolutely, of course, yes, it's all, all rubbish, rubbish, isn't it? Of course. So thanks ever so much. And we'll see, see you next, next time. time. Okay. Bye. ta The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.